Greetings YouTube, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Welcome to what I hope will be the first of many indie game showcases. The idea of the showcase is to show you some of the new games I've been getting that, uh, that may not be very big, they're very small one person developer games, but they're a lot of fun and they jumped out at me from a lot of the games I've been getting lately. So this is the best of the games I've been receiving. These games are very small, but you can pick up and play them very easily. And most importantly, they're very, very good on price. So the price point is very low for these. You can pick them up for usually a couple of dollars. Now, the first game we're looking at is called Legion of Scorn. It's by a one-person developer called Phoenix Resurrection. Now, Legion of Scorn's story is pretty simple. You're trying to stop an army of evil robots. It's a top-down shooter, very reminiscent of, of ones like Robotron X. And what jumped out at me with this game was the very simple Super Nintendo era graphics and the pumping soundtrack. The soundtrack to this game was very impressive. It's, uh, it's right up there with some of the other games I played, like Bugs Must Die. Now, this game is pretty simple. Every 10 waves, there's a boss. So you can fight your way through around 100 levels. Even though this is a very simple game, it's going to take you a very long time to finish. There's a myriad of power-ups, and the enemies are pretty varied, as you can see. It's not the it's not the best quality shooter on Steam, but it's certainly the best value for money that I can find at the moment. So if that's something you're interested in, if you want a, a quick and simple shooter you can play, and you do you do enjoy nostalgic games try this one out. As I said, it's a very cheap. It's only $2 on Steam at the moment, and for that price, I can definitely recommend it. We're going to move on to the next game now, and we'll have a look at another really good indie game that I've been playing. Alright, and it is time to have a look at the next game in our lineup. This game is called Flux Caves. It was done by one-person development team, Fubinelvo. So Fubinelvo developed this entire game in his spare time. So he's a he's a software developer by day. This was a love project that has now turned into a into a game on Steam. And the fact that this game was done entirely by one developer, I found to be very interesting and, and quite impressive. Every time I think I've seen the limits of what can be done in the Unity engine a developer comes along and pushes those limits a little bit further. Now, the puzzles are pretty simple to start with, but they soon get quite uh, quite challenging. All you're doing is guiding a series of these coloured balls from their source here to the destination, and that will open up the door to the next level. Now, there are some issues with the visuals, and they become most apparent when you go through to an area that is outdoors. You'll, you'll see this in a moment. In the, in the outdoor areas, it's very obvious. As you can see here, the, the draw distance in the game is, is quite bad. And some of the textures uh, the, from a distance look, look quite, uh, quite awful. But uh, the same problem with the, with the grass. It's obviously a 2D sprite, some of it, and it's, it, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't look too well, uh, it doesn't look too great from certain angles. Now a lot of these issues I've seen in many other Unity games, they're not exclusive to Flux Caves, but uh, I thought it was worth mentioning. That's really the only complaint I've got with the game. So, as I say with all indie games, if, uh, if, if visuals are the only complaint I've got and the rest of the game is solid, 9 times out of 10 I'll let it slide. I would rather have a game that, uh, that looks terrible, but plays fantastic, than the other way around. Now, as to the puzzle mechanics of the game, as I said before, you're guiding a, a set of balls from a source to a destination. Now, there are a number of different obstacles that you have to work around. Now, the first one is obviously these gaps in the pipeline. You need to have a continuous pipeline all the way through. Now the balls also follow the, the laws of gravity, so as you can see this ball needs a little bit of push. Some areas of the pipeline require a power source, and that's what this crystal is. We'll pop this crystal into the power, 
and it should power this, uh, this accelerator block, which will push the balls up into the next area of the pipeline. These accelerator blocks obviously have to go in the right direction. This one's not in the right direction. So we're going to swap these two out. Now in terms of, uh, in terms of whether I would recommend this game, the game is a little bit expensive. In fact, it's probably the most expensive of the entire lineup at around $12 Australian. I would recommend this on sale. Uh, I think that the price is a little bit high considering the game needs a, a, a little bit more polish. But if you see this one on sale, go and pick it up. I, I really, I really can't, I can't make any complaints about the game apart from the fact that, uh, that the visuals need a little bit of work. So, so, yeah, take from that what you will. I, I will say this game is re uh, one of those ones that, that is very popular with younger players. Mr. Bobbles played this and uh, he really enjoyed it because the game has a very, very gradual learning curve. The puzzles start off rather simple. And and they get uh, and they get more more complex as time goes on. So we're going to move on to the next game in our lineup, and uh, and hopefully another one that you'll enjoy. All right, and moving on to the next game in the list, we have Shrine of the God Ape, and this is actually probably the one that I enjoyed the most out of all the games, simply because it reminds me of a 2D version of Dark Souls. This is a brutal platformer that you're going to have to you have to get used to the fact you're going to die a lot. The other really cool thing is there are a series of bosses in the game. And if you think you're just going to fill them full of lead, you're going to have to be fairly creative in uh, in dispatching these guys. As you can see, bullets do nothing to them. You've got to knock them off cliffs, you've got to you got to knock them onto spikes into walls. And there's a number of other mechanics in the game too. So you're going to have to be, be on point with your timing. Obviously I'm doing quite well because I've had a bit of practice here. I've actually made it halfway through the game. So this is a little bit earlier than uh, than what I... Um... There we go. You see how we made him kill his own son. But uh, yeah. Shrine of the God Ape is a lot of fun. If you like games like Dark Souls, I may actually I may actually do a more lengthy video on the game, but I just wanted to quickly show you this one because I was just really impressed by uh, by Zachary's work. He's obviously taken a lot of uh, a lot of inspiration from from the Souls games, from games like The Surge, and he's made a, a very interesting 2D platformer. Uh, something very simple graphics, but uh, but one that, uh, that that's definitely one people are going to enjoy if you like a challenge. So we're going to move on to the next game. Alright, and next on the list we have Woodboy by Somnambulist Games. Now in Woodboy you are a magical boy who is made from wood. You've been brought back to life by a, a young family. And your goal is to solve the problems of a village here. And the village is under attack from an evil Lich King, and they're also running out of water. So your spell will only last five days, and after that five days, the wood boy will turn back to an ordinary piece of wood. So there is a pretty strict time limit in the game. Now this is a roguelike, so you're going to have to start the game quite a few times in order to successfully finish it. Now, I, I was actually interested because there's a lot of people complaining that this game is too hard and it's actually it actually can't be finished. I finished the game. It took me a very long time and I'm actually considering doing a walkthrough to show you how to finish the game. If, if you are interested, leave that in the comments. I'm, I, I believe the game, when I last played it, only took around 10 minutes to finish. So it's not a long game. But most of the challenge is going to be in restarting the game again and again, trying to work out the right combination of, uh, of, of places to visit and people to talk to. You don't have to do everything in the game to finish it, but you are going to need to, you are going to, need to remember the right sequence of, of people to speak to and, and puzzles to solve in order to, to finish the game within the five day limit. So let me know if you want to know more about Woodboy. I, I, uh, I will have a video coming soon to show you how to actually finish the game. 
And as I said, uh, check out my Steam achievements. I'm one of the few people that actually managed to finish the game. So moving on to our next game. Alright, and for the next game in the lineup, we have Limitless Hunger by Zid Lynx. A small one-person development team, like many on the list today. Now, this game is in tech demo form, and obviously this is very, very, very early in the development cycle. In fact, this game isn't available for sale yet, nor would I suggest that people go and buy it at this stage. Obviously, it needs a lot of work. But the developer has been reaching out to people and trying to get people to try the demo and let him know what their thoughts are. Personally, this, this game's going to need a lot of work to, to compete on the store, even as a, as a budget title. There's a, there's a massive indie market here, and obviously, while the game is functional, it's a, it lacks a lot of content. That being said, if you want to try the game out, I'm going to leave the, the link to the demo in the description. If you're wanting a, a free game you can try, then this may interest you. But yeah, don't take it as an endorsement of the game at this stage. I need to see more before I could uh, I could recommend this in any capacity. Moving on to the next game. All right, and next in the list we have a trio of games by one-person development team Con Radical Games. Now the first game is called Slam Slide. You are an amorphous blob, trying to get as far as you can through a series of levels. Now this is an old school runner type game, and while the graphics aren't too good, the controls are reasonable with a keyboard and mouse, I'm sure they would be a lot better with a controller, and the game is free on, on itch.io at the moment, so if, if that's something you're interested in, go and check it out. I would, however, if you do get a couple of minutes enjoyment out of this, at least sling the developer something. Um, I believe you can you can donate as, a, as little as a dollar. So if you do get some fun out of the game, maybe throw on the buck. I don't, I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to ask. And we're going to move on to Con Radical's next game. All right, and moving on to my favorite out of Con Radical's titles, we have Stoneblade. Now, Stoneblade is an interesting take on the classic game of Tetris. Now, in Tetris, you're trying to group your blocks up in multiples of four. In Stoneblade, you need to separate out the blocks and the bombs. So the bombs are on the right and the blocks are on the left. And your goal is to destroy the blocks with the golden blades, like so. And then when you get a dark blade, you can destroy the bombs. Now the other thing to take note of is every time you destroy a bomb, you will lose some of your health. And keeping the bomb separate like this, this bomb's by itself, detonating it with the copper blade will cause very little loss in health. But detonating bombs that are chunked together will cause a large loss of health. So the game is, is one about keeping your, your health high enough. And two, about keeping the bombs separated. And finally, of course, you want to make sure that the blocks don't reach the top of the screen, just like with Tetris. So it's a very interesting game. And out of all the Tetris clones I've seen over the years, this is probably the most original I've seen. So this game is free on the developer's itch.io account. Again, I will leave the details for you to try out. But again, I do urge you, if you do like this game, maybe consider throwing them a dollar. This is probably worth it. At least for me, I think this is worth a dollar. Uh, if you like Tetris games, this is a no-brainer. You'll, you'll definitely enjoy this. Moving on to the next game by Conradical. And for the last game from Con Radical, we have Loot Box Life. Now, Loot Box Life is all about you trying to stop an evil corporation from destroying the game with loot boxes. Something that I can relate to, given the large amount of rubbish that I sometimes get on Steam. Now, this game obviously is a, a big step up from Slam Slide. And I can see that they've, they've used what they learned in making those games to make this. It's very polished, it's very colourful, the graphics are, are really nice. And the game overall just feels like a, a better version of his earlier work. Now that being said, I actually, as I said, enjoyed 
Stoneblade the most of the three. But that's not to say this game is bad. But be aware that this is a this is a paid title. You can't get this for free. Given it's his most recent game, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, check it out if you're interested in in a simple, colourful platformer and you want something that's not too expensive. And if you enjoyed his other free titles, that'll probably give you an indication of whether you want to go and pay for this one. So that was it, the three games from Con Radical. Uh, check them out. Uh, as always, the link will be in the description of the video. And if you want to know more, just let me know. So that was it from Con Radical. We're going to move on to the last game. Alright, and to round the video out, we have some footage from a new title being worked on by GameCan called Overstep. Now the best way to describe this would be a mix of your extreme sporting games mixed with old school arena shooters like Unreal Tournament and Quake. Now there's no demo available for this game as yet, but one, when one does become available, I'll let you guys know. I'm certainly interested because I used to love Unreal Tournament and Quake, and I haven't seen anything like that recently. But this isn't out yet. Let me know if you want to know more, and I'll post more information as it becomes available. In the interest of full disclosure, I wasn't paid by any developers for any of the games that were shown today. I was only given review copies of those relevant games. So if you are interested, please be aware the my opinions are my own standard disclaimer over and hopefully you will join me when we have a look at another set of indie games next time hopefully if more become available we may even do another indie showcase in the future so that was it let me know what you think and hopefully you'll join me when we have a look next time at another indie game until next time skill incarnate out <laughs>